my grandmother. She was actually born in 1900. So she was 108 years when she passed away. She was a very independent woman. Her husband was a businessman. He would take, you know, go on business trips and leave her alone with the young children uh, at home. So she somehow brought them up. She was also uh, very well read and I would borrow her books and, and read. So what struck me about her is that her fierce independence, you know, and she was very determined. She would not really listen to anybody. She had her own viewpoint and even the food she ate, she would have a drink in the evening, she would eat chocolate, she would, you know, it, she just lived the life she wanted. My mother, Florence Hattala. My mother lost my father when she was 36 with four children, uh, 16, 14, 12 and two, that was me. Um, she had to take over a company, a pesticide manufacturing company uh, with no science or business degree. My mother proved that there is nothing a woman can't do that a man can do. Uh, she did everything possible that a man could do. She drove, she uh, did the housework, uh, she did everything. And uh, she ventured into so many businesses uh, later on, many industries, uh, finally became a film producer as well. There are three things that she taught us, to be resilient, to be determined, and uh, she taught us integrity. And I think that has helped a lot in my life to uh, do the things the way I do. My friend from school and who's still a, a close friend of mine throughout has been uh, Sandra Di Zoiza. Um, so she and I go way back from school. When I was, whichever role I was doing, I would uh, call her and I'll, I'll try to ask her, look, how do I handle it I said, when I have self-doubt? And she's one person who said, don't worry, you can do it, you're talented. Don't worry, tonight I'm praying for it and uh, don't worry, you'll do it. You know, three years ago when I went to Harvard, it was a um, one-year program and I, when I was graduating, and she was asking me, are the kids coming for the graduation? I said, yeah, I'm planning on getting them down. When I was about two days before I left for my course, she called and said, okay, so when are the kids coming to, for the graduation? I said, oh, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the visa, so they would not be coming. When I took off, I think I got a message from her, don't worry, I'm going to land there. I'm going to be on, on, on your side of the corner. I'll be there for your graduation. And she invested in getting a ticket and of course she landed and embarrassed me with balloons and congratulations Kasturi in that auditorium. That was like, that was embarrassment but that's what she is. She's doing amazingly on the other side, I'm inspired by her, we support her. Uh, she's like the, the global specialist in custom experience in the digital world and uh, such a talented lady. My former and my first boss at the International Centre for Ethnic Studies, Dr. Radhika Kumaraswamy. She was also then the UN Special Rapporteur for Violence Against Women. And uh, I remember I was so much in awe of her. I used to admire the work she does because she used to stand up for a cause. She used to go on these various missions. Uh, and of course, violence against women and being a woman fighting for the rights of women. It was something I admired and also her approach to it. She was very dedicated to the cause. I remember she never made me choose either my studies or my music, uh, but she encouraged me to do both the best I could. And I think that was very valuable for me at that time, because had I been asked to choose, I really don't think I would be where I am now in terms of my music. So she opened the road for me. She paved the way to my journey, having brought me where I am thus far and I am ever so grateful to her. Munira Fazlebaz, uh, we call her Muni. She uh, helped me see things in a different perspective, um, made me realize uh, there's so much to life more than the glam and the glitz and you know, when you're in an internet entertainment industry, you become very superficial. And I'm so grateful she opened my eyes to see things as they are. There are a few things that she has taught me in life uh, not to judge people, uh, to live with gratitude. The other thing is um, zero expectations from people, which I'm still, you know, um, trying to, you know, <laughs> master it because it's not easy. And the other thing is humility at all times. So she's always kept me grounded. So I think I'm blessed to have a friend who has helped me to become a better person. When you achieve a kind of status, it's very, f it's few people that you can trust. So your closer, like your friend circle gets really smaller. So I think I'm so uh, blessed to have 
few like handful of friends who are genuine, who are sincere, uh, who keeps me grounded, who instill good values in me. Munmi is definitely uh, uh, one of them. Growing up, my mom worked only until one o'clock or two o'clock until I finished school. And then she used to pick me up from school, take me for my tuition classes, elocution, you name it. We used to like go explore restaurants, you know, have a little snack here and there, go home. We had a perfect mother-daughter time and I'm really, really grateful for it because in these small time periods, she shaped the person, the woman I am today. I saw how dedicated she was and how honest she was in her work. But also one of my favorite things was goal setting with her. Every 31st, December 31st, she would sit down with me and we would write goals that we would want to achieve together. And by the next, like 31st, what Amma taught me was make a goal and achieve it. And by the end of the year, when you see those ticked boxes, you have such a sense of accomplishment and you're proud of yourself. So by these little things that we did together, unknowingly for me, but she obviously she must have schemed it or planned it, um, she made me a confident young woman. Being a partner in the progress of over one million women, we wish you a happy Women's Day. HNB, your partner in progress.